Well, anytime we have a geometry question without a picture, we should probably draw one. And so they're telling us we have a rectangle here, and they aren't exactly telling us the dimensions. They're telling us that the width, the length and width are in a ratio of 35 to 10, which it's a ratio, it's not the actual measurements. But, well, we can just make the length and width 35 and 10, because 35 and 10 are in the ratio of 35 to 10. In fact, those are the easiest numbers that we could probably pick to meet that ratio. So this is in a way, this is what I would call an arithmetized question, because even though we don't have the specific dimensions, we are just kind of making them up. Um, then we need to change some things. So we need a bigger rectangle, and they are increasing the width by seven. So now we have a new width of 17, and we wanna know how much the length needs to change. So you can build an equation where the variable is just like the answer. So we could do kind of like a 35 plus X or something, but I don't wanna do that because I think that that confuses things for no good reason. So we're better off just letting the length stand on its own as our variable. And they tell us specifically, use ratios. So let's just do that. So I would have uh, 10 over 35 is equal to 17 over L, right? Uh, maybe I should have put it the other way just to um, maintain what they said in the question, but it doesn't matter. Ratios, you can flip them. Um, so now I would just cross, multiply, and divide. So L times 10 and 35 times 17. So 10L is, and here's where I use my little scientific calculator, uh, 17 times 35 is 595. So actually dividing by 10 here is very easy. I wouldn't need the calculator for that. Uh, that is 59.5 but that's obviously not the answer one because the answer isn't there but two because like I said they don't want to know what the new length would be because they actually never told us the new length they just want to t we just need to understand how the, the the length changes so we can just do this pretty easily take our initial uh, length of 35 and subtract it from the 59.5 and that's where we get 24.5 and that is obviously an increase because we have a bigger length. So that's choice B. So that's the math behind this. And I, I think it's pretty you know, easy to do. You should know how to do it. It's, it's something that you could see again. And so you should know how to do it. But I will say that I kind of knew B was going to be the answer before I did any of this work. And it's because I understand the SAT, not because I necessarily understand the math. So let me explain what I mean here. When I read this question, I do understand very quickly that I'm going to need an increase, right? If I have a ratio and I increase one thing because of the consistency, I need to increase the other thing as well. So I would have known that choices A and C are wrong because they involve a decrease. So right away, I would have been on a 50-50 shot. And then just looking at the numbers they gave me, there's no way that choice D was gonna be right. It's way too easy, right? This is the choice that someone picks if they don't understand the math. The question says it increases by seven, your kind of confused instincts about math tell you, oh, an increase of seven for the width means an increase of seven for the, the length. No, it's not gonna be that easy. We should at this point know we're in the hard section of the test. This is the hard second module. And so it's gotta be more complicated. And if you find yourself in those situations, where you know a question is supposed to be difficult, but there is an answer that would be really, really easy, right? That requires almost no work to pick. Just because you know the SAT, you know that answer is probably too good to be true. It's probably wrong. So without doing the work of knowing why 24.5 is the number, I would have known that that's certainly a weirder number than the seven, and it means it's probably right. If this is confusing, I don't want you to know, worry about it right now. It's not really a strategy that you would kind of make your main strategy on the SAT. The best way to get good math scores is to be good at math and to think about the calculator and use those kinds of tools to help you. But as you practice, you're going to notice that certain hard questions are trying to lead you in a certain direction where if you kind of like gave up on the question, there's an answer that would be like the most tempting, the most attractive. And so generally, if it's a hard question, you should avoid those answers because they're too good to be true. 
And that is what D, choice D is doing here. It is the too good to be true answer. It is a trap meant for people who don't know what they're doing in math. And just by that and process elimination, we'd be left with B. And in a pinch, that kind of thinking can save you on some of the hardest SAT math questions.